Hi everybody and welcome to Storytellers of Mallorca. Another wonderful guest with us today. And uh, Sheka has a wonderful story that she's going to share with us, not only in this podcast, but also the other one as well. So hey, Sheka, hi and hi. welcome. We've had some fun this morning, haven't we? Uh, I know. <laughs> We managed to get this recording going um, after a few little challenges and things. So we've got there in the end. So tell me, what drew you to Mallorca? Uh, what drew me? So initially, I, um, I wanted to start a new journey. Um, I was going through burnout, mm -hmm. especially in, in Dubai. Um, I was owning a business. I was a full-time athlete. I was mm -hmm. training, coaching, running the business, um, and it was it was a lot, and it was too much for me. And my main focus was um, to compete. Like mm -hmm. in the back of my mind, my passion was just to compete. And um, I was at a retreat in Chamonix. And uh, we went through this workshop mm -hmm. where you write down all your desires and why you do what you do. <clears throat> and I, I looked at my answers and that basically that was the epiphany that mm -hmm. I wasn't doing what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a full-time athlete. I wanted to compete mm -hmm. uh, professionally and I was looking at a couple of places around the world. For me, I've always dreamed of living on an island. Yeah. And the most important, <laughs> the most important parts for me, uh, moving abroad was I want mountains and I want sea. Right. Because mountains are always calling me. Yes. So um, I ended up in Mallorca. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that, that's cool. Um, so. Um, so really, how, how long have you been here now? I mean, you, you wanted, to, wanted to be here, but um, before we start with how long have you been here, um, where are you from? Oh, I'm from the United Arab Emirates, mm -hmm. born and raised in Sharjah. So I've lived in Sharjah until I was 30, 31, okay. and then I decided to move here. Right, right, right. So it's a bit of a, bit of a change. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yes. It's a crazy change. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah, still yeah. I still have those moments where I don't believe that I'm here. Sure. <laughs> so, yeah, yes, it's yeah, crazy. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So how long have you been here, here now? How long have you been on the island? I've, so I moved here in 2019, September. Yep. And my final move was February 2020, right okay. before the close down, the yep. Yep. lockdown. Lockdown, lockdown. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I would say about four years now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the the, the reasons that you um, you wanted to be here, you wanted the you wanted the sea, um, you wanted the mountains, and that as well. Uh, part of that were there no other places that sort of ticked the boxes like Mallorca for you? Yeah. Um, so I looked at California and mm -hmm. I looked at Switzerland as well. Okay. Um, I loved Chamonix and I had friends in, living in Switzerland yep. and following them um, for, I think it was about a year and a half of their journey in Switzerland. And uh, I wasn't really sure where to go. So those were my top three options. Right. California is a bit too far and I wanted to still be close to family and I still wanted to be able to travel back and forth easier mm -hmm. um, and um, also my main focus was to compete out of Europe right. so being based in America is going to be very tough for me because the competitive field in in America was much bigger and wider sure. than than it is in Europe I mean Europe now is is changing there are so many amazing athletes coming out of Europe and yeah. super strong um, but back then Europe made more sense so I ruled out California right and then it was either Switzerland or Mallorca. Okay. And I had a couple of friends already. Well, in, they're Instagram friends, not like in-person yeah. friends. Yeah. And I asked them about Mallorca and they uh, told me it's a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. It's very chilled out, very relaxing. And that's kind of what I was looking for. I wanted something that was not as intense as my um, my training because CrossFit, I'm not sure if you know, the sport is qu 
quite intense and yes. you spend a lot of times in the gym right and it's quite disciplined and i wanted something quite the opposite a more more sun more sea more relaxing yeah, yeah. um so i visited mallorca in 2019 and i fell in love with it right yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and what part of it you know grabbed you the most what parts did you yeah. fall in love with the most here What's, what was it, you know, okay, you had the sea, you got the mountains and things, but was there something else as well, or was it just a combination of both? I'll be quite, like, brutally honest. When when I visited Mallorca, uh, friends of mine put me in a, um, in a friend's mm. apartment. Okay. And I don't even remember where it was. It was in the middle of nowhere. And for me to get groceries... For those five days right. was a 45 minute downhill and then a 45 minute uphill yeah. so for me it was like okay i need to take into consideration i need a car if i'm going to be living out here i don't know where i'm going to be living um and i wasn't really sure if mallorca was the place for me sure um and we were sitting on the last day that i was here i was uh, set to fly back to london mm -hmm. And uh, on the last day, we were having dinner in Portugal, and I was looking out at the sea, and all I heard in my mind was, just do it. And that's basically what pushed me to do it, because yeah. Yeah. I just heard, just do it, don't think. Yes. Um, and then once I found an apartment and I moved here in 2019, mm. the more walks that I took by the beach, in the parks, you know, a lot of parts of Mallorca is, is home to me. It feels like Sharjah. A lot of the greenery, a lot of the, f the flowers that we had in our garden, yes. they're quite similar. And the smell of Mallorca, it's the humidity, the yes. sea, a lot of it feels like home. Right, right. And that's why I decided to move here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nice, 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 nice. I mean, for those, those things that you, you just mentioned there, I mean, were there other sort of struggles that you had or things that challenges that came in being here from, I mean, it sounds like you've lived other places around the world. So it's not just coming to Mallorca from, from home. You have been to other, other areas. Was there one or two areas of, that were more of a struggle than anything else? I would say, I mean, I, I, haven't, I haven't lived anywhere other okay. than my home. Okay. I've traveled, yes. Right. And we've spent a lot of summers and winters mostly in London yep. because London is our second home. Um, I would say the most challenging part is <laughs> just trying to call this home in the system. <laughs> right. right. For me, the system is crazy. You know, it took about six months to apply and then it took another year and a half to get that approved. So I would say the system is kind of, it's, it feels muddy, like everything is very slow and dragging. Yeah. Um, and I'm not used to that because in Dubai you snap your fingers and everything is done. Sure. And it's quite, quite fast. Yes. Um, also because I'm local, it's easier, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, what was the other question? Yeah, no, I think, I mean, we've talked about this with a number of different people as well, is that the, the bureaucracy here is different yeah. than other parts of the world. And you have to get into that mentality of realizing that it's a, it's a manana lifestyle. Yeah. You know, and the whole philosophy behind that is not just about, okay, let's put it off till tomorrow, but you know, it's also the philosophy that... Um, if something doesn't work itself out by tomorrow, then yeah. let's have a look at it again then. Yes. And it's, it's about that. And the people that I've you know, been talking to as well have said, yeah, it takes a little bit to get used to. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I think, um, I honestly think for me it was such a breath of fresh air to, mm -hmm. to live that life because when I was in Dubai, it was go, go, go constantly. I was up at 6 a.m. I was out of the house at 7 I was back home at 10 by the time I get to bed and then it's just rat race. You wake up, you do the same thing. And by the weekend, I'm just too exhausted to socialize. Yes. And um, the Manana lifestyle for me was very eye-opening. Okay. Because 
I used to stress so much about putting my phone phone on airplane mode. I used to stress about, you know, not answering my phone in time, not doing things on time because yeah. everything is like an urgency. Yes. Because that's how I've been trained with school, university, work. Yeah. Um, and when I came here, it it clicked for me that well, nothing is really an emergency. No. Like yeah, there's always tomorrow. Yeah. And for me, that was like oh, I can enjoy today. <laughs> you can just do it tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. And um, throughout throughout the the months of getting used to that, I find I found like a really nice balance of you know enjoying myself, meeting friends, socializing, working, and then also taking time for myself and. The Miniana lifestyle got to be a little bit where I'm like, oh, if I don't need to go to the bank today, I'll just go tomorrow. Yay, yay. <laughs> <You're> just, yeah. <laughs> they can yeah. wait. They converted you. They yeah. converted you into, the, into their lifestyle. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. And it, it, yeah, it is. It, 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 very, it, it is very much like that where, um, yeah, everyone is like that. And you go to the offices and we got into the mentality when we were going, because we did it ourselves. I mean, there are companies here that will do the work for you which is you know you pay for that and that's fine but with my mentality was okay well we're going to go there they're going to ask for something else yeah they're going to ask for something else you know that and then in the end they say oh no that's everything you think really you know, yeah really okay. yeah is it done okay yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. i've I, I had that just recently so i was supposed to renew my residency yep. last year well it took me a year to get it done yes because just every every paper that i would give them they're like nope reject it we need this we need this <laughs> and it's good that they're very specific about what they want because yeah. at least i can ask for the right papers but it's also frustrating it's like well i'm giving you something that is very similar yes. but they want it in spanish or they want yes. it this they want it written this yes. way yeah. Yeah. um yeah. yeah so yeah it is quite the struggle but yeah. i mean many yeah. other lifestyle is yeah. It's, it's quite nice. Yeah. It is, it is. And, and the, the translation, when you're having to translate something for them, uh, we know the good translators in town now, but some of them th th weren't acceptable to mm -hmm. them. The translation wasn't enough. Yeah. You know, but that's, that's, that's part of it here, and, and people have to be patient with that. Yeah. It's very much a patient um, place to be. Did you find that there was a time where you just didn't want to be here, or, you know, you think, oh, I've had enough, or you thought, you, that thought never really entered your mind. Um, I would say when I first moved here in the first six months, it was it was quite the struggle yeah. because I'm I've never done this before. Mm -hmm. I never lived abroad. I I'm starting from zero. I'm starting from scratch, and as much as I'm that kind of personality I can always reinvent myself I can always jump into something new mm -hmm. it's the um, it's it's a whole different ball game yeah. when you are an Arab in you know like from the UAE in Mallorca and the only one here right. and every time you meet someone they're like, what, what are you doing here why aren't you in Dubai sure um so there's there's that kind of struggle where it, for the first six months, I constantly questioned if I did the right thing. Yes. Um, but there was always this voice telling me, like, hold on, just wait on it. Right. It's going to come. It's going to come. Yes, like, yeah, yeah. Um, and slowly but surely, I started meeting most amazing people. All of, all of my friends that I've made in, in 2020, are, they've still stuck through. They're still by my side. Yeah. Um, and funny enough... Um, Five, five or six people from Dubai moved here. Oh, okay. They're not okay. born and raised Dubai. You sure. know, there's um, uh, Lebanese, Romanian, mm -hmm. Swedish, Spanish, Mallorquin. You know, they've yeah. all moved here. And I've got two more friends that are planning on moving here. Wow. So we've, I mean, there's more and more people like interested and yes. wanting to come here and live here in Menorca. Yeah. 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 So um, even though it was a struggle for the, la for the first six months. Yes. Um, after I passed through that and I made the final move, I think it really hit me around May, May or June of 2020. Like this is my new home. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, that, that's great because then, you know, you've again, and, and we've talked about this before, forged a path for others 
to come and to be here. Yeah. And you know, that's, that's wonderful because it has so much to offer here. And it is, you know, it's a safe island in many, Very safe. many, many parts. There are a few like everywhere where you don't, don't travel into. Mm-hmm. You have to be careful, but there's not many. It's not many. Is it really that it's like that? Yeah. You know, if people um, are wanting to, to to think about moving here, maybe from the UAE or from anywhere else around the world, is there any sort of advice that you'd like to give them to um, you know before they came here? Yeah, get a lawyer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And if anybody needs a lawyer, you just let me know. I'll okay. give you my lawyer. She's amazing. Yes. And yeah. I'm so so blessed. I don't even remember how I got her contact, but. She, she's done it all for me right. and, you know, touch wood, I'm so, so lucky that everything was, yeah, it was a little bit of a struggle trying to get papers and, but she found the, the fastest and easiest way for me to live here. Right. Um, legally, obviously. Yes. <laughs> and, um, that would be one. And then two, make an effort to, to learn a bit of Spanish yes. because, when I first moved here, it was, I would talk to one person that speaks English out of, you know, like a day full of people speaking Spanish. And I'm just like deer in headlights. I don't understand a thing. Um, so, I mean, just the basic, basic yes. stuff. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, when, you're, when you're here, because I don't know, I'm, I'm asking this, but when you're in the, back home or back in the UAE, um, the language you're speaking there obviously is completely different. Um, but when you are here, do you feel that you miss that? You miss not communicating in your in your home sort of language, or do you adapt quite easily to the English? Because you speak very well in English and yeah. well. So, <laughs> yeah. um, how do you find that for yourself? You know, that do you miss that sort of language connection? Yeah. Um, so my, I would always say that my first language is English. Because okay. it's the it's the language that I think in. Yes. Um, and I'm very comfortable and easily I can express in English. Mm-hmm. My mother tongue tongue is Arabic. Okay. And you can see like my group of friends, they're already using Arabic words because right. I'm constantly using words in Arabic even when I'm here. Yeah. Um, and funny enough so one of my friends that uh, moved here is um, Lebanese Romanian but he was born and raised in Dubai okay and he speaks fluent Arabic so when we're together yeah we speak English but there's always you know when people are around and we want to talk about yeah. something or someone <laughs> we're like okay let's switch it up to Arabic yeah, 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 yeah. and I'm lucky enough where you know like my friends um, I'm always communicating in, in Arabic with them. Yeah. Um, my closest friends back home and I mean I listen to you know Emirati Arabic music all the time right Uh, it's a big big part of my life and um, all of the Instagram accounts that are you know Arabic and you know I just keep up with the trends back home yeah Um, I do miss it yes it's it's I mean quite tough when especially when you're learning a new language Mm. because I'm now learning how to read, write, and speak in Spanish. Okay. And it all gets jumbled up in my head where I don't know if I'm translating it English to Spanish or, or Arabic to Spanish. Okay. okay. And sometimes I have to go in Arabic to English to yes. Spanish. Yes. Yes. Um, and like nobody tells you learning a new language in your 30s is hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard. Sure. Um, but... Yeah, of course I miss it. I mean, I miss I miss the culture. Um, I celebrated Eid uh, this year here, and I made you know traditional Emirati food. Right. And I ate that. I had um, Arabic coffee, and every time I go back home, I bring back you know dates, sure. date syrup. Yes, yes. You know saffron. I get everything with me. Yes. Zaktar. Um, so when my friends are here, I always welcome them with the Arab hospitality, yes. you know? Um, so I, I bring a lot of that with me here. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's wonderful. And what do you do? What do you do, um, you know, being here, work-wise and, and other things? I know we've talked about this um, a couple of times, but what, what, what's your main area that you're working on here? Well, my plan didn't really go to plan. 
go to plan as with as they do. Yeah. You know, um, with being an athlete and uh, in complete honesty, I do believe that you know we're meant to be guided somewhere for specific reasons. Mm-hmm. And I, when I was when when I first moved here, my focus was just CrossFit, CrossFit, CrossFit. Right. And um, my body was just not happy with it. It was mm-hmm. not happy with the training, the volume, and the amount of times that I took the volume back and I introduced it back in. My body was just rejecting that experience. Right. And so about uh, two years ago, I decided to take a step back and mm-hmm. reevaluate what truly means to me. And it's, it's very hard because I identified with this uh, image of me for you know s- almost seven years right uh, being a CrossFit athlete and being Kiki as a CrossFit athlete yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's how I grew my following on Instagram that's how people know me and how people you know um, when they come up to me they're like oh Kiki you're the girl that does CrossFit I'm like well not anymore <laughs> so last year I basically put the question out to the universe and I asked okay, what where where's my calling because yeah. I can't, can't really find my way and I don't do anything without complete passion mm-hmm. and love that's how I operate that's when I'm the most inspired um, and that's kind of what happened with CrossFit when I first started it it was spark and um, that kind of catapulted me into you know um, being um, a pioneer in like the, the women's sports movement in the UAE, you know, it was unheard of mm-hmm. uh, women being, you know, competing and competing alongside men or competing with men. Uh, and then also like posting that on Instagram. And, and now you see so many Arab women out there doing that. Yeah. And so, um, I put the question out for the universe and I said, well, if I uh, cut the cord with CrossFit, where am I meant to be? Where, where, where are you taking me? And well, you know how the universe works, the crazy signs. I met um, like every single month that I traveled, I met a DJ or I met a music producer or I met somebody that works in music. And my reply was always, oh, I always wanted to do that. And I never heard myself say that. Right. And I was uh, talking to my best friend about it. And I said, you know, I don't know what to do with my life. You know, I love CrossFit. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, I love CrossFit, yes. And I love coffee. but I, And I love spirituality and coaching and all of that. But there's no spark. I need Mm -hmm. the spark. And she said, girl, the only two things that I can say that art that's you that's kiki is you're obsessed with coffee and then there's music (laughs) it's like remember you know all the mixtapes you used to make remember the cds you used to burn remember this and and i was like yeah that's that's kind of true like i always wanted to do it and then after that conversation i was constantly meeting uh djs music producers from all around the world and i always ask them the questions of you know, how is your lifestyle? Because, you know, there's a lot of things that is associated with like the party scene that is not me. And I I don't enjoy the party scene. I don't enjoy being in big crowds and I I don't enjoy that so much. Um, I love festivals, but you'd always find me in the back enjoying the sound and I don't really care about the visuals or anything. Um, But I have such a deep love and passion for music. And... Um, through those conversations, um, I started meeting more and more people and Mm -hmm. I met a DJ here that put me in contact with another DJ who was running courses on how to learn. And that's basically how it started. That was in October last year. And yeah, I've been learning how to DJ, recording my sets and uh, recently just signed with a manager. Cool. So wow. I'll be working on, you know, you know, booking yes. gigs yes. and yeah. traveling and touring. And it's all, it all sounds crazy to me even when I talk to people about it. Yeah. Oh, this is yeah. my life. Oh my God, this is my life. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm, my DJ name, yes. my DJ name is Kiki Nova. 
Kiki Nova. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Kiki is what everybody calls me back yeah. home. And it's just yeah. a nickname that everybody associates me with. And Nova is new sure. because I uh, resonate so much with supernovas okay. because I'm constantly reinventing myself. Yes. So yeah, Kiki yeah. Nova. Fantastic. Fantastic. I mean, you know, and we will, um, you know, I'll put those details down below as, as well for people to, to look out for you and to talk to you about this. Yeah. Um, but living in Mallorca, I mean, um, back to the Mallorca side, because um, we're actually going to get Kiki to come back and talk to us on the Becoming podcast, because um, what she just mentioned, just for a little bit there, we're going to get into deeper as well. So that's, that's going to be coming up in the near future. Um, what do you love about Mallorca and the Mallorcan lifestyle? What's what really sort of grabs you about being here? Um, Mallorca lifestyle, of course, Mariana. <laughs> That's my favorite part. Um, you know, Mallorca has taught me to live in the moment and live for today and yeah. expand on that and just focus on, you know, what you can control um, in the moment and enjoying, just enjoying life yeah. because um, we've been we've been programmed and conditioned into doing, 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 and yes. this is the yeah. the doing. Um, mentality, the mm -hmm. hustle mentality is it kills the soul because sure. that's that's what clouds creativity, that's what clouds innovation. And mm -hmm. if you're constantly running and doing things and being yes. in this masculine action, action, yes. action, there's no space for there's no space for being. Sure. And there's no space for receiving, no space for openness, no mm -hmm. space for this is kind of what Mallorca has taught me and it's what I love the most about being here is, is it, it's in the air mm -hmm. because you see people, you know, they work in the morning, but then in the afternoon they're, they're at the beach yeah. um, and the evening they're, you know, they're in the middle of the city and yes. there, people are living. Yes. And this is what I love most about it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, it, it is. And if there was one bit of advice you'd like to share with people about, you know, coming here or being here, what sort of thing might that be? My advice? Mm. Like, come and do it or come and check it out first or... Being here as a living. Mm. My advice for people that want to live in Mallorca is... Explore. Mm -hmm. Don't stick to, don't sp stick to one place mm -hmm. because when I when I first moved here, I was in Portugal for about two years. I was living in El Molinar, just yep. Yep. further down, and um, I spent so much time exploring the island that so many parts of the island has given me golden nuggets of of inspiration um and then second would be dive into the culture mm -hmm. and be open to change yes. because it's not like anywhere else yeah. it's it's very there is a little of hustle and bustle but it's so relaxed yeah. I mean, when I first moved here, I was so annoyed that because I moved in, in winter, yes, yeah. I w why are the shops closed on a Sunday? Yeah. Why is this coffee shop closed all winter? Mm -hmm. Why are these guys on vacation for four months? Yeah. And I was frustrated because it's like, well, Dubai is 24-7. Yes. But then yeah, yeah. I needed to get that out of my head where I needed to change yeah. my mentality and the way that I work on a daily basis. Yeah and my own schedule to my orca schedule yes and even though i don't remember all the bank holidays <laughs> i'm I, I think i enjoy the days off and i yeah. enjoy the quiet and mm -hmm. i enjoy you know the extremities of the weather and the culture and more and more international people are here and it, it's it's such such a beautiful place so yes. i would say yeah. Explore, mm -hmm. be open to change, and uh, get into the culture, cool. the Spanish culture. Cool. Yeah, 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 that's lovely. I mean, it's, 
every story is different and every story is unique. And yours is unique plus 100 <laughs> almost, yeah. you know, coming from where you have, but being here and adapting to this lifestyle. I mean, it's, yeah. it is, it's, it's a lovely story. It really is. It's, yeah, it's really thank cool. You. And there's so much more to share, which we know we're going to be um, having a look at. Uh, in the near future as well but uh, Kiki thank you thank, thank you so you much for having much. me <laughs> um, we're going to put your details down below uh, here to to make contact if you you know feel like you want to there as well um, <laughs> a, uh, oh, I was going to say was just my mind was thinking about yeah the, the Spanish lifestyle which is lovely um, <clears throat> but uh, please like share comment subscribe, subscribe. <laughs> 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 Please do that. A call out to one of my sponsors, Cher, who has been doing all my website work there and it's really looking great. So Cher, thank you very much. And thank you guys as well for the storytellers of Mallorca community for, for listening in. And I look forward to catching up with you guys later. So hey, awesome. thank you again. Thank you. Yay! And we'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye.